becoming one with the bees, heading to a new camp for Pride Month, talking snowmen in the summer, plus celebrating a major milestone at this environmental center. And taking a tour of the new additions at this spot on the Pocono Beverage Trail, two more challenging signature golf holes in the Poconos, and talking the economy in all four counties, plus celebrating Juneteenth right here in the Pocono Mountains. Hello everyone, welcome to the June edition of Pocono Mountains Magazine. I'm Brianna Strong. And I'm Jim Hamill. It is a beautiful day here in the Poconos. It really is, Brianna. Oh my gosh, and so many fun things to do this time of year. We're hitting the full four summer season right now, and there's a lot of free things to do when you're visiting the Poconos or just right here in your own backyard, like state parks here at Prompton State Park. Yeah, we'll show you one free place that you have to visit this summer coming up in just a minute. But first, let's see how the Poconos have been making the news lately. NBC 10 Philadelphia got pampered in the Poconos at the French Manor and the Lodge at Woodlock, two incredible destination spas. And did you know the Poconos is home to the country's only snow room? State and local officials kicked off the development of Lackawaxen River Trails in Wayne County. Fox 56 reported on the ceremony in Honesdale with nearly a million dollars in grants being used to build accesses complete with parking, ADA accessibility and more between Honesdale and Holly on the Lackawaxen River. This is a project that's not just for us, but for our children, for our grandchildren and for future generations that are going to be be enjoying uh, this beautiful resource that we have. And the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission also stopped by Prompton State Park to encourage safety on the water this summer season. State and national park officials joined them, urging everyone to wear life jackets and to make sure they fit and are fastened in order to save lives. WBRE 28, WYOU 22 had the story. 80% of the boating fatalities every year in Pennsylvania are a result of people not wearing their life jacket. We had nine, nine uh, fatalities last year, recreational boating fatalities. Seven weren't wearing their life jacket, and we see that from year to year. It's going to be a better experience. WNEP-TV featured the new high-speed six-person ski lift coming to Blue Mountain Resort for the winter season. Loyal guests could even buy the old chairs, taking home a piece of local history. Okay, now back to summer. On the holiday weekend, we have upwards to 1,500 to 2,000 people here, so it's kind of like having our own little city. WNEP also stopped by the family-owned and operated Keen Lake Camping and Cottage Resort in Waymart. With rental units, RV sites, and lakeside glamping, this has been a popular summer spot since 1954. 2022 is a monumental year for some celebrities and popular products that are turning 50, like the jet ski, McDonald's McMuffin, Shaquille O'Neal, and Dwayne Johnson, just to name a few. And here in the Poconos, we're celebrating another big 5-0, the 50th anniversary of a local organization loved by locals and visitors alike, especially this time of year. Get up close to animals, live ones too. Learn through touch and stretch your legs on six public hiking trails. Each with its own rewarding views. All in a day at Pocono Environmental Education Center. Oh, so many things to do outside here at Peak. Open year round, Peak is known for its day and overnight school field trips, scout programs, summer camps, and team building courses. There are special workshops and events for the public, plus groups can rent space for meetings and retreats. The nonprofit has hosted more than a million visitors since 1972, and in many cases, this is their first true experience with the great outdoors. Being more comfortable just being outside in the forest, which number of our students coming from cities don't have the access to just like this untouched forest. It's a place to connect with nature, but couples originally came here to connect with each other. Peak was once Honeymoon Haven, one of the Poconos' premier honeymoon resorts. Everything here on the property is either the existing structure from when it was that facility or we've renovated and gutted it in some way, shape or form. 
The original honeymoon cabins have been converted into overnight accommodations for students and groups. They're also rented at times as Airbnbs. So this is very much still run uh, like a resort, but uh, the focus now being primarily on environmental education, although we still want to make sure that everybody has a good time while they're here. The old bowling alley now separated into classrooms. This former swimming pool transformed into crawl and walkthrough exhibits, including a replica beaver lodge and bat cave. So these are areas that humans would not normally be able to explore. Peak sits within the Delaware Water Gap National Recreation Area, one of the country's most popular outdoor destinations. Known for its access to the Delaware River and home to Pennsylvania's tallest waterfall. The combination of an overnight camp or nature center that is also situated on national park property is very unique. Peak has come a long way in the last half century and has no plans of slowing down. And our goal for the next 50 years to, is to you know, increase the number of, of people that we get to use the facility um, and to whom we can provide environmental and sustainability education. But the road, or should we say trail to success, hasn't always been easy. In 2018, severe storms brought down a thousand trees, blocking trails and crushing cabins. Then the pandemic followed, forcing this in-person camp to pivot into creating a virtual curriculum and online outreach. The nice part is we're going to be able to use that in a, an innovative way going forward. Adapting to the elements and learning along the way. All part of the mission here at Peak. For the Pocono Television Network, I'm Brianna Strunk. Still to come on Pocono Mountains Magazine, time to take a tour of this vineyard that also has beer and spirits as well as wine. What's new for the season ahead coming up? Plus, we're exploring a new camp in the Poconos to celebrate Pride Month. When kid stuff was kid stuff. Remember those days? We do. What? Visit PoconoMountains.com. Modeled after the most legendary holes in America, Mount Airy Casino Resort's golf course is a sight to be seen and played. From rolling hills to numerous ponds and streams, this over 6,500 yard course is a true test for golfers of any level. Book your tee time online at mountairycasino.com slash golf. Hey, it's Jim Hamill, and on the Pocono Beverage Trail, we have a lot of treasures throughout the four counties of the Poconos, including right here at Mountain View Vineyard. And Linda Rice, the owner, is coming out to take us on a little bit of a tour. Thank you again for having us today. Thank you. Thanks for coming out here. Good to see you, Jim. Yeah, give us one more time then. Mountain View. Mountain View Vineyard, Winery, Brewery, and Distillery. That is a mouthful, but you have them all. That's it. I have something for everyone, all adult beverages. Nice. So you guys are welcoming back Tours. Yes, we're doing tours for the first time since COVID. I take folks into the vineyard and what I'd like to do, if it's okay with yeah. you, is just tell folks a little bit about what we've added yeah. since you were here last. Yeah. So right over here, we are adding a whole nother outdoor bar. Ooh. It's going to have 16 taps because all of our wine and beer are on tap now. Oh, fantastic. Um, there will be a slushy machine out here. And the most awesome part is going to be a wood fire pizza oven. Nice. Super excited. And then folks can come over here uh -huh. um, if they'd like to have a seat on this side of our building. This is brand new. Uh, this has gas fire pits. Wow, amazing. Uh, yes, a lot of seating. We probably have seating for another 75 people or so, 75 to 100 people. The Mountain View crew has added so much to the Pocono Beverage Trail and their vineyard. Patios, a tent, playground, outdoor bars, and soon, 
Oh, and baby goats are coming. I almost forgot. Baby goats. We have baby goats Aww. coming. My husband has been dying for baby goats, and I was afraid they would eat our vineyard, but he's talked me into two little pygmy goats, uh -huh. um, and their names are Billy Joe and Bobby Sue. Oh. I'm so excited. They're coming in about 10 weeks. New additions to Mountain View Vineyard, all to enjoy the main ingredients grown right here. We consider ourselves sustainable. Um, we're not certified organic, but we do practices that are pretty close to organic. Mm -hmm. So if you'll see here, we have wood chips. Right. Uh, my husband will be coming back through and putting a whole nother layer. We put the wood chips down to um, keep weeds at bay. The 12 week growing season is underway and Linda and her team are ready to welcome visitors to learn all about the process. These are actually just starting to bud. Yeah, yeah they are. The grape harvest comes in September, and until then, Mountain View owners Linda and Randy Rice are pulling out all the stops, live music, tours, and what makes this operation unique? We're a family-run operation, and, and that's gotta have a unique aspect to it yeah. as well. Yes, we love what we do. People think that we're crazy. You know, it's been 18 years wow. since we started growing our first grape, and then it's been about 12 and a half that we've been open for business. And we work together every day. We're married 32 years now. Congrats. And we still love each other. We haven't killed each other working side by side. So let's go inside now. I want to show you a little bit about how things have changed right. since COVID. So prior to COVID, um, folks came right up to the tasting bar mm -hmm. and they were served their wine tasting, their uh, beer or spirits flights right there. Even though the rules were um, lifted, what we discovered was that it was a whole lot easier to take care of guests continuing to be seated. Uh, in fact, the guests liked to, the fact that they could stay longer, that someone actually took their order, hmm. um, which, you know, we didn't do that. It, it kind of forced us into turning it into almost like a restaurant. Right. If you want to visit and sample wine, beer, or spirits, you'll want a reservation and take some of the Mountain View goodness on the go with you in bottle, can, or growler. So, Linda, you are, you know, from the grapes being grown just outside here to bringing it in-house and producing wines and beers and uh, spirits. Then you can even sample them while you're having some food or some slushies and some, you know, uh, family time here yes. at the uh, vineyard. So it's amazing that you can do all of this in one place. It's really uh, amazing it is. Thanks, sweet. Sure. That was our mission. Make it a seriously fun place for everyone to enjoy. And also we're pet friendly. Yes. Okay. And we're you're gonna to have that. And we're gonna have goats, goats baby goats soon. <laughs> Can't Thank wait. you again for having you're us. You're welcome. Thanks for coming out. Surely. For Linda, the entire team here at Mountain View, thank you for watching. It's Jim Hamill with the Pocono Television Network. Cheers. Here at a new campground, camp out Mount Nebo in East Strasbourg. Let's explore it together. Let's go. So Camp Out is a new camping experience for the LGBTQ community. We offer a ton of entertainment and beautiful views and a beautiful saltwater pool to enjoy. It's for allies of our community as well. Having been to other LGBT campgrounds in Pennsylvania and the area, um, we definitely recognized the need as they were busy and often hard to get into. So we decided it was a great idea to, to offer another option. It is membership based. The membership costs $35 a year. Members have to be 21 and older. For years of being a camper myself and uh, enjoying the beautiful Pocono Mountains, we, uh, me, and some, me and CJ, have looked around for places. Um, we kind of had the idea to start a campground. And being so close to major cities in the Northeast is certainly a plus. We're about 75, 80 miles out of Manhattan or Philadelphia. Our campground is 68 acres on rolling hills with beautiful views of the mountains. We offer tent camping, we offer RV sites, we have luxury deluxe cabins with full air conditioning and a full bathroom, and we also have rustic cottages. Our season starts uh, April 15th, and we usually run to about November 1st. All the major holidays are celebrated at Camp Out Mount Nebo throughout the season. On big holiday weekend, we have a pianist coming in from the West Village of Manhattan to do a session in the piano bar between live musicians that come to visit a piano bar where people can sing along or be featured as a soloist, um, karaoke now and then, uh, DJs if you'd like to you know, hit the dance floor, 
uh, drag shows. There's a lot going on. This is more than a campground. It's a place for the community to feel safe and celebrated. I just like to see people have a fun, safe place to come to that you know, they can enjoy themselves and you know, party safely and just have a good time. This whole experience is a new experience for me. I haven't been big in the community and it's, it's definitely, I felt very welcome. We enjoyed uh, downtown Stroudsburg and everything it has to offer. Plus we enjoy the Delaware Water Gap and all the, the trails and hiking we can do there too. You can book online at our website at PoconoCampOut.com. You could also call right in and we can help you book a site. And walk-ins are welcome too. We celebrate everybody no matter what. So they are welcome here and they will be welcomed here and they should have a good time. What makes it more than a lot of campgrounds is the different options, you know? Um, it, it's not just one thing going on at a time. On a weekend, you'll have multiple uh, things you can choose from and all of them a little different. Or like a community campfire even, which is a little more relaxed and sometimes we even have like an acoustic guitar strumming. Remember to check online about all the fun things that they have here in Camp Out Mount Nebo. And don't forget to tell your community about it. Cristina Luna for Pocono Television Network. Still to come on Pocono Mountains Magazine, we tackle two more signature golf holes in the Pocono Mountains. See if we can get a par or even a birdie at two of these tough holes with gorgeous views. And... Today we're becoming one with the bees. Find out why next. Things have changed for all of us, but luckily the Pocono Mountains and everything it has to offer is still here. Just climb our mountains, get lost in our forests and trails, or stroll along our shores. Even try our light and sunny breezes. It's the best way to rejuvenate yourself and it's older than, well, the hills. We've always been here. You and your family's safety is our first priority and it always will be. Feel the comfort again when you visit the Pocono Mountains. Find us at PoconoMountains.com. For your meetings, you can expect a lot from our mountains. In the Pocono Mountains, your teams can enjoy state-of-the-art meeting rooms and beautiful spaces, delicious gourmet meals, and well-deserved free time that everyone can agree on with the most unique experiences. Expect more than mountains in the Poconos. Go to PoconoMeetings.com. Today, we are suited up and becoming one with the bees. This is something I have never done before, but we're always up for new experiences here in the Poconos. All right, let's head inside and find out what all the buzz is about. Roger and his nephew, Anthony, show us around their bee farm in Pleasant Mount, Wayne County, with dozens of hives and thousands upon thousands of honeybees. Once you're kind of on that mindset of like the bees are part of the greater ecosystem of our society, then you kind of look at these insects differently. This is the queen bee right here. From the hives comes honey, sweet, pure honey. We have Greek friends who will put it in their baklava. We have Indian friends who will uh, put it with their chai tea. And it's, it's beautiful how it's a conduit for culture. The bee farm is just one unique feature of the equestrian house, a former horse farm turned vacation rental and event venue. You can learn all about the bees and agritourism in the northern Poconos, plus pick your own wild blueberries here during the inaugural Honey and Blueberry Festival, being held over six weekends every Saturday and Sunday from June 18th through July 24th. Part of the Honey and Blueberry Festival's mission is to bring the community uh, into the property and join together as community. Like many others from New York City, Roger's family vacationed in the Poconos and wanted to buy a second home here. In 2018, they discovered this 100-acre property and fell in love. It was incredible. It had a, a main house, which is our, our private home, and it had all these other buildings on it. Roger turned the former horse arena into an event venue. Weddings, family reunions, and other large gatherings can be held outdoors, too. Old horse stables were converted into modern meeting rooms. 
The equestrian house also has pet-friendly vacation rentals, including this spacious log cabin, plus cottages and suites. And of course, guests are always greeted with homemade honey. We want to share the property. Uh, we don't want to keep it all to ourselves. The equestrian house has a fishing pond, pool, basketball and tennis courts, nature trails, and a fruit orchard. We have lots of apple trees on, on property, pear trees, and, and lots of other, other things that the bees love to pollinate. From planting roots in the Poconos to planting fruit trees, Roger never planned to start a business or become a beekeeper. But this is a special place, and he's excited to share it with you this summer during the Honey and Blueberry Festival. We found, if you will, a country oasis. For the Pocono Television Network, I'm Brianna Strunk. Hey, it's Jim Hamill, and we're back to play another signature hole here in the Pocono Mountains, this time at Sky Top Lodge in Canada. This place is immaculately beautiful with so many rolling hills and trees and, and vistas and views, and especially the historic lodge and the course here built in the early 1900s. Harv here is hooking us up with a car today. Thank you so much for having us out today. Welcome to Sky Top, Jim. Appreciate it very much. And of course, head golf professional Justin Aluni. He's the man going to play number two with us out here, a par four, and it's got a, a beautiful uh, scenery behind it. What a wonderful little golf hole we have here with the lodge off to the left with the lake off to the right. A very nice place here for you to play. So We're excited to play. Let's go on along. Excellent. Justin, thank you, and Harv, we appreciate it. You're going to have a lot of fun. I thank guarantee you, it. All righty. On we go to number two at Skytop Lodge. All right, hole number two, a par four. You want to hit a pretty long tee shot down the center of the fairway. Hopefully, right? Hopefully. The, the idea here on the second hole is to aim a little bit further left than you think, because the fairway will tend to go from left to right, and okay. we'll finish more in the middle. Okay, all right, do you want to take honors, or do you want me? I'll go first. All right, please do. All right, let's give this thing a go. Nice par, Justin Aluni. Tell everybody here uh, at home where they can find out more about this wonderful course you have here at your property. You can go to skytop.com slash golf, mm -hmm. or you can give the golf shop a call at 570-595-8910. All right, on to the next hole. Justin, thanks. Thank you, Jim. All right, take care. Another signature hole here in the Poconos that you gotta play is right here at the golf course at Pawpack Hills overlooking Lake Wall and Pawpack. I'm here with Jesse Hobbs, general manager. This is a Tom Fazio designed course, Jesse, and tell me about what makes it so special to play here, all 18 holes. Well, uh, Tom loved building into the side of mountains and uh, this course is beautiful, pretty much spectacular all year round. Our maintenance crew does a great job. We have two signature holes overlooking Lake Wall and Pawpack with elevated D boxes. I'm going to take you to hole number six. On our back nine, we have hole number 16, which is a par three, beautiful par three, overlooking all of Lake Blanc All right, let's go, my man. Number six at Pawpack Hills comes with an amazing view of the third largest man-made lake in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Lake Wall and Pawpack. So it's a dog leg left. You can hit driver on this course only a few times, and this is one where you might want to, but you gotta be pretty accurate. You guys can find us at pawpackhills.com. We also have a Facebook and Instagram page. We post every day, letting you know what's going on, events, outings. Let's see if I can't sink this putt. Go! Jesse, thank you so much for playing with us today. You got it. Thank you for coming out. Your holes in the Pocono Mountains, and this is one of them right here overlooking Lake Wall and Pawpack at Pawpack Hills. Take care, everyone. 
still to come on Pocono Mountains Magazine. Some big projects in the pipeline across all four counties of the Pocono Mountains. Get the economic update plus. We're celebrating Juneteenth and discussing the importance of this new federal holiday. Your health has never been more important. That's why Lehigh Valley Health Network is making it easier than ever to take control with MyLVHN, your digital health partner. MyLVHN allows you to schedule appointments right from the palm of your hand, message your doctor questions, and even see an LVHN provider from the comfort of your home through video visits. With MyLVHN, you have on-demand access to your health anytime, anywhere. To learn more or to sign up, visit lvhn.org slash mylvhn. Inside this 54,000 square foot building is your one-stop shop for all things motorcycles. Pocono Mountain Harley-Davidson has everything from Harley merchandise to a full custom shop where your dream ride can come to life with help from the legendary Rick Petco. Visit PoconoHD.com where it's better in the mountains. Welcome back to Pocono Mountains Magazine. We're so happy to have you here today. And I'm really excited because we have a great segment coming up on Juneteenth. And first, I want to get right to it and introduce our guests who are going to tell us all about it. First to my right is Tamiko, Cleo is to her right, and Michelle is right to my left. So I think I want to start with the first question is, what, what is Juneteenth, Tamiko? Can you tell us a little bit about it? So Juneteenth is a celebration that um, started in 1866 after the slaves in Texas were uh, informed that they were free. This came um, two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation, so they were really um, freed uh, back in 1863, but they didn't find out until June 19th, 1865. So that, that's where it came from. So that was really centuries ago. What has happened to make it a celebration that we're kind of talking about today? Well, we have wonderful people like Sister Cleo here who have um, uh, been pushing to make sure that the holiday is recognized. Um, and it became a, a state holiday here in Pennsylvania, again, uh, largely due to the uh, efforts of, of Cleo Jarvis um, back in 2019. And um, last year, President Biden made it a federal holiday. So now there's celebrations everywhere because um, people now understand that it's an important date that needs to be recognized. So Cleo, this is great. What happened in 2019 that got the state of Pennsylvania to do that? I never take credit for what the ancestors do. So the ancestors did that work, along with tons of other people. Um, I'm seeing her face in my head, and I can't remember her name right now, but there was an elder African-American woman in Harrisburg who actually pushed, along with Ron Brown of the Pennsylvania Juneteenth Coalition, and they invited me on. So I didn't, that, that's, I'm, I can't take credit for their work, uh, for everybody else's work. It was a collective. And, and it's interesting you said ancestors. Uh -huh. What did you mean by ancestors' work? <laughs> Those gone before me who paved the path, whose steps I'm walking in, and whose shoulders I stand on. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here right now talking like this. So they kept this, the spirit of Juneteenth alive. Oh, yes. Oh, the spirit of Juneteenth is so strong because it connects us directly to those people from the past. How does it connect us and why should we know that? Those people suffered. Their blood, sweat, and tears, and their toil is what made this country as great as it is for the most part. When you have free labor for 200 years, then you can be, you know, you know, you know balance sheet, profit and loss. You have gains beyond imagination. So, yes. We need to remember them. We need to remember the people who created the ironworks because they brought that craft with them on those ships. The people who could use spices and herbs and make something nasty taste great. 
now it's called soul food. The people, you understand? Yeah. The people who can take something that looked like nothing and make it something beautiful, and now it's considered artifact. So those people need to be remembered. They didn't give up. Even though it was hard, they didn't give up. They stayed alive so that we could survive today and speak about them. It's great that we're, we're, we're doing this. And Michelle, I want to turn to you really quickly, too, to get you into this conversation. How, how was Juneteenth first celebrated? It was first celebrated in 1866, a year later after the, uh, I'll put that out there loosely, um, Freedom Day, um, Emancipation Day. And um, a year after Juneteenth, uh, black Texans felt the need to publicly celebrate. It wasn't received well. So uh, they took $1,000, bought a piece of property in Texas, um, started celebrating within that area, that park, that land, and it became known as Emancipation Park, which it's named today. Did it continue from 1866? It has continued throughout this day. And uh, today, what are some of the traditional things you could find at, at that type of celebration? Is there um, anything traditional? We have foods. We, sell, we go to our black history monuments. We go to museums, spend time in churches, um, celebrate with families, huge picnics, festivals, as we have up here in the Poconos, and many states celebrate with festivals but just a huge day of celebration and paying homage to our ancestors. So whatever we can do to celebrate and make that day as big as it is, that's what we do. So Tamiko, I know you and I were talking a little bit before this and um, the, some of the research I've done shows that like in the 60s and the 70s, there was a little bit more of a resurgence mm -hmm. from African-Americans moving from the South to the North. Mm -hmm. How did that all happen as far as bringing the celebrations here more towards the North, mm -hmm. the United States? Well, you know, it was always easier up north for, um, I'll say, African Americans. So um, the, a lot of the um, traditions and, and cultures from the south, you know, it made their way up, up north. So that was just, Juneteenth was just another one of those um, celebrations. Um, you know, Nichelle mentioned about, you know, Galveston, Texas, where, you know, the first um, uh, Jubilee, they actually called it back then, the first Jubilee was held. And um, so, yeah, it was important that, you know, the word got up north, and, and it did. And as people migrated to the north, as, you know, many people did, um, and, and uh, brought the customs and, and information and, and knowledge and, um, and artifacts <laughs> to, to uh, the people in north so that they could be aware as well. So Cleo, I'm curious because you ancestors makes me curious because I love history. How do African American families feel about Juneteenth? What if I was to ask an African American family, what is Juneteenth? What do you think they'd say? Well, it depends on who you ask. Because quite frankly, many people, even though they look like me, don't think like me and don't have the knowledge I have. And so they would have to be some of some people would have to be taught what Juneteenth is because of course you know that's not a part of school curriculum. And many families got disconnected. And remember, it started in the South, so depending on where the region is that you're talking about, they might not have known what Juneteenth is. So it took a long time and years, and because of national, the national sanction, pat on the back, or yeah, go ahead and celebrate Juneteenth kind of energy, now people are like, what's this, oh, really? Oh, I didn't know about that. No, just you can't go by skin color. There are a lot of people of European ancestry who know a whole lot more about African and African American history and culture than people of African American history and culture, depending on where they're located and their, succum their conditioning and their circumference of comfort. It just um, so if you ask me, though, I could tell you. I'm going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I love Juneteenth because it not only helps us to remember the past, because you know they always, the elders always taught me as a child, and I'm an old lady now, um, but as a child, that if you don't know your past, you're doomed to repeat the past. Right. And so we need to remember the past, but don't dwell there. And we need to use the past to inform where we're going. So, and we have a bright future. And we have a lot to celebrate. We have accomplished so much. So that's why Juneteenth is a celebration. It's a remembrance. 
and the celebration at the same time. So for me, that's where I would come from with Juneteenth. And that's why it, it will survive because it doesn't dwell in the past. It celebrates the future. Um, and it that's celebrates great. freedom. That's a great point, freedom, which is the yes. really important point there. Real mm -hmm. important point. So, Michelle, one of the things I wanted to ask too is, what, what, from my research showed that a lot of the early celebrations really kind of gravitated around churches, correct? Like, and this is such a beautiful church that we're in right now, Bethlehem in Strasbourg. Um, what was that like? Was the church like the center of the community at that time? Um, early on? Yeah, a lot of the churches is, are where we were able to come together as a family. We weren't able to publicly celebrate. So churches where families really were able to love, celebrate, and feel safe in it for, to an extent. But that's where Juneteenth would more or less be celebrated. It started with dinners and you know praises and singing our national anthem, We Shall Overcome. And we, we were able to do that in, in, the, in peace, in a sense of peace, with a sense of peace. So yeah, that's where it, pretty much we gravitated to the churches for safety and security and for the love that was within the churches. So have the churches really been kind of the keepers of this over time, this celebration? Uh, no, I think it, within the communities, depending on each individual, how strongly they feel about the celebration of Juneteenth has been the keepers. So the families, the ancestors, our elder relatives keep it instilled in the families. So individually in each household, I think that's really where it is instilled. So two things I do want to definitely talk about is, I know we talked about Juneteenth, which is great, but I want to talk a little bit about where we're sitting right now. So Tamika, where are we sitting and, and why is it important? So we are sitting in the Stroudsburg Little Bethel Historical Association's building. It used to be the Stroudsburg Little Bethel AME, African Methodist Episcopal Church. And this building um, was built in 1868. Prior to that, um, in the record, public records, there was apparently a structure that was built in 1855 somewhere across the street. And it, it was, um, it was bought by white people, but um, then given to um, some uh, black families. This was the first church that African Americans had of their own in this area, in the Stroudsburg area. So that you know, high, highly important to know. It is rumored that this was possibly a stop on the Underground Railroad. On the floor, there's a little um, floorboard that can pull up, and it was it's rumored that um, escaped slaves um, actually came here and hid under under the floor here. Um, and um, also down the road, we know Dansbury Depot, we were told that Henry Box Brown was an escaped slave from Virginia and he mailed himself in the box. And again, it was rumored that he actually mailed himself to the Danbury Depot train station and may have attended this church. So we haven't been able to prove that yet, wow. but that's what we were told. We have to wrap this, which I hate to do. But there's one question I wanted to ask to the panel because I think it's important. A hundred years from now, where, how do you envision Juneteenth will be celebrated 100 years from now? Cleo, really quick, I'm going to ask you first. <laughs> wow. 10 seconds. A <laughs> hundred years from now, I hope that Juneteenth will be celebrated as we hover in our flying cars <laughs> and we can go all over the world and visit every Juneteenth, it won't be called Juneteenth, maybe in, in London, but it would be called Freedom Day, and we could go to their Freedom Day, and it'd be tele, it would be um, live streamed in real time, and we could all celebrate together at the same time. Tamika. <laughs> A hundred years from now. Um, I think that the celebrations will be grander, um, and you know, as more people learn about it, learn about the, the celebration, I don't really want to call it a holiday, but a celebration mm -hmm. and recognition, I think more and more people you know, will know about it, and it'll be celebrated widely, just like the 4th of July is. So. Michelle, you get the okay. I would say I would <laughs> like to see uh, history, our history in the history books, but I don't know if there'll be books in 100 years. <laughs> Everything will be technical. so. Um, I just hope that our history is taught to the youth of the future because our history, black history is history and it needs to be included. So that's how I see Juneteenth as a, bit, a day that needs to be um, taught in schools and I hope that it's as largely celebrated with fireworks and honor of offices shut down, closed, no option of work 
this is a holiday, this is your day, Emancipation Day, Juneteenth, Celebration, Freedom Day, all that. Well, gosh, I hate that at there, but we're going to be doing a Pocono Perspectives with this panel, so I hope you'll tune into that. But for now, I'm Chris Barrett for Pocono Mountains Magazine and this lovely panel. We'll be right back. The residents of Monroe County have been overwhelmingly supportive of St. Luke's. Over the past five plus years, we have just grown beyond our expectations. We want to continue to meet their needs, and so we are now planning to expand and double the size of our campus. We've learned a lot since we've opened in 2016. We've adapted to a lot of different challenges. As we start on our expansion, I'm proud to be part of the future vision of this campus. Hey, it's Jim Hamill, and 2022, the Poconos region is building off of its resiliency and reputation for economic potential. That means this year and in the coming years, there are plenty of projects in the pipeline in the four counties of Wayne, Pike, Carbon, and Monroe. Innovation and opportunity, both are alive and well in the four counties of the Pocono Mountains. There are lots of examples. Here are some of the projects the counties are driving forces behind starting in Carbon County. A massive warehouse, nearly a million square feet, is nearing completion in Kidder Township along Route 940. As they say, location, location, location. And this is one mile away from the Interstate 80 PA Turnpike Interchange and also within a Keystone Opportunity Zone. A few hundred jobs are expected as a result of the new warehouse. Also new, two hospitals in Carbon County in recent years. Today, I am LVHN proud to share the groundbreaking of our first hospital in Carbon County. Lehigh Valley Health Network, opening its Carbon location with emergency rooms, surgical, rehab, radiology, and much more, all at around $80 million. St. Luke's University Health Network also opened its doors at its Carbon campus within the last year, adding to it a medical office building soon. St. Luke's offers cancer treatment, cardiac, physical therapy, and physician's offices here too. In Monroe County, Great Wolf Lodge is expanding with Woodland Villas. Margaritaville announced plans to develop the historic Pocono Manor property, and Desaki owners Vincent and Charlie Trapasso also have their own big plans in the works along Route 611. That includes a five-story, 100-room hotel right behind the restaurant. Our goal is to provide a higher-end boutique hotel that sets the bar for more of a Ritz-Carlton experience here in the Poconos. The roughly $50 million project in conjunction with Northeast Site Contractors will be completed in three phases by around 2026 with storage units, and most importantly, help address the serious need for housing in the Poconos with the Ridge Project. We're building a community for 386 new townhouses that will be of the higher end. And new to the Poconos, Black Buffalo, a 3D construction printer manufacturer, which is bringing jobs and building its own facility in Smithfield Township. It too plans to help address housing and infrastructure needs right here. We don't just want to localize the production of the machines in our factory and the material. We want to localize actual building of infrastructure. Pike County is getting its own housing infrastructure with a couple hundred new apartments, including Paddler's Point in Westfall Township. Plus, behind the inn at Hunt's Landing, a housing complex with more than 150 units are going up as we speak. Medical facilities are also eyeing up locations in Dingman's Ferry and Lake Wallapopak. And this interchange at Interstate 84 near Milford will look a lot different after a developer was awarded contracts of sale for the potential of 900,000 square feet of distribution facilities. This building is designed 
like a food, like a modern food warehouse. And in Wayne County, plans to develop an agricultural done. innovation center rolled out at Ag Day this year. The facility would support the local food system and strengthen agritourism and other community initiatives. Wayne County is also developing trails along the Lackawaxen River. Hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants are now in place to help build river accesses for boating and fishing with parking and ADA accessibility between Holly and Honesdale. Speaking of Honesdale, its revitalization plan is moving forward with future phases of engineering and improvements aimed at calming traffic, beautifying the town's gateways while maintaining Honesdale's historic charm. The opportunities are right in front of these counties, and local leaders are using innovation to achieve the goals to keep the Pocono Mountains growing now and in the future. Jim Hamill for the Pocono Television Network. There's five hundred, five and a half. Say five and a half. Will you go? Still ahead. Going once, going twice. Sold. Find out why you're seeing snowmen in June. At East Stroudsburg University, you will study with cutting-edge technology. You can perform in the classroom, field, or stage. You'll get involved on campus and off. You can have fun preparing for your future. All of the unique things to do in the Pocono Mountains cannot be shown in 15 seconds. You'll just have to book your stay with us to find out. It's almost 90 degrees here in downtown Stroudsburg today, but this next story will have you thinking back to chillier times. I have 500. Who will go to five and a half? There's 500, five and a half, five and a half. Will you bid? The competition was heating up as Pocono based businesses and residents vied to take home one of the popular snowmen of Stroudsburg. We wanted to buy one so we could put it out every year. In fact, we bought another one for another store we own. So it's all about supporting the downtown. Each of the 39 life-size sculptures were uniquely designed and handcrafted by a local artist. When the snowmen grace downtown Stroudsburg every November through February, Thousands of visitors come to snap selfies and search for their favorites. An organization called Go Collaborative came up with the idea four years ago to generate business for the borough during an otherwise slow season. And boy, did it snowball. The amount of people and families and friends that all come through town and really make a day of it is really incredible. The auction was organized to pay the artists for their hard work and also make room for new designs. So if you hit the switch, Kyle Maloney shows us his interactive creation, Cogswell, which sold for the highest bid of $1,500. The post-apocalyptic steampunk-inspired snowman is even battery-powered to light up at night. Essentially, he's made out of uh, all kinds of different materials, to include metal, which I like working with. Um, and actually some of the metal pieces, when you buy the metal, it's shiny. I had to distress it, kind of form it around the snowman. Cogswell isn't going far, and neither is his pal, Mr. Pennybags. Their new home is on Main Street in Stroudsburg. Real estate, Monopoly, so we really like that one too. So uh, we have suitcases ready for them. They're going to be in front of the front door. They're moving in. Linda Butch came and conquered for this corgi snowman. I'm a corgi freak, I guess you would call it. I collect corgi items. Um, I raise corgis. Um, I have a, two corgis now, as a matter of fact. And it will look great in my backyard with all my other corgi things for right now until I can figure out where I can put them in the house with all the other corgi things. <laughs> Anybody at 650, 625? You bought them. Number five. 12 of the 39 snowmen sold at auction, generating over seven grand. Bids started at $500, which went directly to the artist. Anything above that was split with Go Collaborative. Those that didn't sell will be back on display next season, along with some new ones. I came here in 1988, and it was still a cool town, but it is really cool now. 
and cooler with snowmen. And they won't be melting even in the summer sun. For the Pocono Television Network, I'm Brianna Strunk. And of course, we're going to be soaking up that sun all summer long here in the Pocono Mountains, but winter will return as we're a four season destination. And so will those snowmen to downtown Stroudsburg, even with some newer designs too, right, Brianna? That's right. And don't forget when you're planning your trip to the Poconos, either this summer or really throughout the year, you definitely want to visit PoconoTelevision.com. Watch the Pocono Television Network to see what is new and what is seasonal right here in our four county region. Yeah, we're on cable streaming and online and even podcasting too. So thanks again for watching Pocono Mountains Magazine. We'll be back next month. See you then. videos. You can also click the link on the screen to watch more episodes of Pocono Mountains Magazine.